I'm finally back. I uh, stayed at my mom's for about two months unexpectedly. Um, oh, tired. <laughs> uh, she had surgery at the end of July to fix a hernia operation that didn't take. And so I was only supposed to stay a couple, <clears throat> pardon me, I was only supposed to stay a couple of nights. And three days after the surgery, we had to call the paramedics to bring her back because the surgery fell apart. She ended up with a bowel obstruction. She was throwing up and she was in a lot of pain. So they admitted her and uh, probably a day later they did redid the whole surgery and then she had to stay in the hospital for a week and then she couldn't do anything at all. <clears throat> um, she couldn't even stand to make her own dinner, <clears throat> things like that. So for about at least four weeks and uh, so I stayed, well, till this week. I came home. This is Sunday. So, okay, last week, depending on when you decide the week starts. So I came home on last Wednesday. Um, well, I was there, I did an awful lot of work, got some gardening done, that kind of stuff. So now she's pretty much able to do everything but heavy stuff. Like, uh, she can't do heavy housekeeping, like um, vacuuming and washing the floor. But I can do that Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> after we go to church because church is open now we've major restrictions but we are having services now so yeah with my glasses off I can't tell whether I'm out of focus and I'm just going to continue regardless because I'm really tired <clears throat> and uh, yeah the big decision I, uh, I will be moving in with my mother and selling my place <clears throat> that's, more tea. Uh, that's a huge decision and and uh, frankly, it is quite a sacrifice. I'm sacrificing my independence, I guess. You know, not not really, but, uh, you know, privacy and that kind of stuff. She has two fairly large bedrooms upstairs and a, and a big landing. So a lot of my furniture will fit up there. A lot of stuff's going into storage. Um, a lot of stuff I'll be noted, donating because my mother plans on leaving me the house. Leaving me the house uh, in her will. So pots and pans, appliances, stuff like that doesn't have to go with me. So uh, um, I'm concerned about how quickly the house will sell. Um, it's not in the greatest area. It used to be. I mean, I've been here almost 30 years, probably 30 years. Um, and when I first bought the house, it, it, I mean, it wasn't the best neighborhood in the city, but it was, you know, working class, average, hardworking people, that kind of thing. You know, it's not a big house. It's only 800 square feet, like most of the houses around me. So, you know, they were, they were uh, working Joes, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but a lot has changed. We've lost, we used to have three GM plants in this area and we don't have any now. Um, and that was over the process of probably the last 20 years or so. And a lot of our other industry has gone uh, thanks to free trade, you know. Um, and I know that they're feeling the same in some towns in the States now with things moving to Mexico. Um, so uh, no offense, but uh, looks good on you. Sorry, <laughs> I, I have no sympathy because you're the guys that voted people in to do this kind of thing, and uh, and that's really unfortunate. Um, they're building this wall to keep Mexicans out, but they've sent all the industry down there, and I think that's your bigger problem. But you know, that's politics. Um, but the same thing happened to us with the first free trade deal when Brian Maroney was in office and Ronald Reagan. And uh, before the ink was dry, we had a m major exodus of, of industries, uh, you know, uh, steel plants, that kind of thing, uh, moving back to the States because there was no tariffs now, you know. And this city has really suffered. It's a fairly small town with three major GM industries. They're gone now. So the economy has dropped and this area is terrible. We have prostitutes in this area. We have a lot of uh, drugs. Uh, you see meth addicts wandering run around all the time. And now that they've built a safe injection site, which I have nothing against, uh, but it should be in, in commercial areas. It shouldn't be in a residential neighborhood, which this is the majority of it. Most of my neighbors own their homes. We have children in the area and that kind of thing. And there's one literally two doors down from my house. 
and uh, the neighborhood has really gone downhill since then. And the city isn't going to do anything about it. They're not going to move it. We've protested like crazy. We've gone to rallies. We, you know, they're not going to do anything that's going to stay there. So my concern is it's going to take an awful long time to sell my house, which um, is is one of the reasons why we've decided to make this change now. Um, that and this surgery has really scared my mother. She um, realizes now that at 85 and after several surgeries, surgeries, three of which were on her heart, um, she really shouldn't be alone. Like she's she doesn't have dementia and she's she's still driving um, fairly safely, <laughs> um, and and she's doing pretty well, you know. But it's only going to go downhill from here. We know this, you know. Um, so it's not so much that I'll be looking after her, I'll be helping her look after herself, you know. Um, nobody else in my family can do this, you know, uh, for, the, for the most part. I mean, they're all working or they live too far away. Nobody's volunteered either, but that's a whole nother issue. Um, Mom and I are really close, we're a lot alike, we like a lot of the same things, so um, I think it'll be all right. You know, it's there's going to be a learning curve for the first little while. Um, <clears throat> you know, she's a really independent, stubborn person, and so am I. Except that I'm more quietly stubborn, like I won't snap at people or that kind of stuff, which she will. She doesn't have a lot of patience. But I'll tell her off. <laughs> you know, I'll just say, hey, don't talk to me like that. You're going to talk to me like that? I'm leaving, you know. Um, I probably won't mean it, but you know what I mean. Anyway, it's good to be home, even though I'm spending a lot of time packing and moving boxes. It's going to be a long haul, because um, I have to go through an awful lot of stuff I haven't moved in 30 years. So the packing and the moving process is going to be a slow process, you know, look, pack up a couple of bu bunch of boxes, load them over in my mom's car. I want to get all the little stuff packed up, and I want to organize what I'm keeping upstairs and what I'm putting in storage. Um, in, 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 no, what I'm keeping downstairs in her basement in storage and what I'm moving upstairs. I think the majority of my furniture will fit. Um, except for like my dining table and that, but we can store that properly with a tarp and that kind of thing, so that'll be right. Um, right now I'm in the process of moving my friend's Derek stuff because uh, I allowed him to store some stuff in my basement. Uh, it's a long story, but he didn't have room for it. It's gaming stuff and that kind of thing. Anyway. Um, my cats are losing their minds. They were, I was uh, I was gone for well since the end of July, so a couple of months. I mean, every other day I would come home and, and take care of the cats and feed them and clean out the rat's cage and take care of her and feed the fish and that kind of stuff. But I wouldn't stay very long. And uh, I mean, Oliver especially is very he's very kind of imprinted on me. So they haven't left me alone for <laughs> well since since I got home. They're just kind of all over me. Which is nice, it's nice to know you're needed, you know, and wanted. But, you know, it gets a little annoying after a while. Like, I can't do anything, I can't even get dressed without him wanting to paw at my clothes and that kind of stuff. Anyway, so that's going on in my life. Yeah, major changes. Um, necessary changes, but major changes. Um, and I'm okay, you know. Um, I was really stressed out while I was staying her initially because I was worried about her. Um, mostly I was worried about her doing things she shouldn't be doing, you know, because she has a tendency to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you just find her standing on a chair doing something and you're like, you're not supposed to be doing this, why are you doing this? And like there was one day where I went, because I at first she couldn't drive at all either, so I was kind of riding and doing the grocery shopping on my my tricycle and that kind of stuff, which I, I didn't mind, um, but it gets tiresome, and it takes longer, obviously. I come back one time, and it was she was only home maybe two weeks from this second surgery, which was really delicate, and I wanted her to really take care of herself because they needed it to heal, you know, properly. She has a lot of scar tissue and that kind of stuff from other surgeries, and she's an older lady, so she just doesn't heal as quickly. Simple as that. And uh, she wasn't supposed to go downstairs and stuff. And here I'm out grocery shopping. And then I see these wasp traps on the kitchen table when I get back. And you know, she told me those were in the basement. And I said, did you go and get these while I was gone? Yeah, we really needed them. I said, Mom, you wanted me to put them out, right? Yeah. Well, 
I can't put them up when I'm not here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why did you use, go down to the basement, use the stairs like you're not supposed to, to get them when I'm not even here to put them up? That doesn't make any sense. And why, and you knew you shouldn't do it because you waited until I left to do it. And she just kind of stood there and went, you know, it's like the role reversal has started. <laughs> you know, now I'm the adult, she's the child. Um, yeah, so I had to have a couple of lectures where they're saying that you're not making my job any easier by doing these things. You're making it harder because I'm stressed out and worried about you all the time. You know, and I won't sleep well and, I, and I'll get tired because I have chronic illnesses too. And I need to get rest. I need to eat properly. I don't need to be stressed out and upset because I'm going to feel sick. You know, like, anyway. Ah, uh, well, that's all personal stuff. So I haven't really been clued into uh, anything politically other than I, <laughs> I just happened to get on. I don't know how I did it, but I I got on. Oh, pardon me. Trump's mailing list. And so I get a lot of propaganda, and it just, it's just unbelievable. The twist that he puts on reality is, is terrifying. And uh, his tweets just... Either he's completely completely oblivious, or he's just an out-and-out liar. I mean, he can't be stupid. I mean, he has done some things in his life. So that means he's just dishonest. But either way, it doesn't make a good president. I don't know. I'm praying to God that he doesn't get voted in again, but I really believe he will. I really, really believe he will. And that's really sad. And I don't understand people who support him. I don't get that. How can you support him? There's just nothing good about him to me, to my mind, from my perspective, you know. You will say he's good for the economy and he's got lots of jobs. Well, yeah, that's because he put a lot of people in prison or uh, in cages. <laughs> Anyway, it's just, there's just nothing that he's done or dealt with that is dealt with properly. And his misogynistic views and his racialist, racist views are, there's no place for that in society. I mean, I've talked about it here before, why I joined the Black Lives Matter um, rallies. You know, there, racism is hate. It doesn't seem logical that we have hate in our lives. Why do we need that? And we certainly don't need it from our leaders. But I could go on and on and on. Anyways, you're up to date now. And uh, I'm going to have to load this. Um, the videos you see previous are a lot from when I was at my mom's. Some of the nicer things. Um, I don't want to rant on about the difficulties of these choices. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but all of her yelling at me. So I should probably stop this now. Anyway, that's me. You're updated and I'm done.